What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Today we're featuring a lawnmower, <laughs> right? Yes. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's on the grass, we're mowing the lawn. Yes. Uh, no, actually we're featuring Jackie Ding's car and Jackie is another, he's like an honorary Hoonigan, but he's also Asian, so he's like a uh, brother from another mother. Yes. Right? But you, you are the honorary Hoonigan. I, uh, yeah, we did Hoonigan 1 to season 2 and lost. Mr. Brian and Jackie, boys are up. Perfect. We'll show them how it's done then. Team Rush Hour. <laughs> no! Oh my god! But, no, no, but that, the point is that you were there and you made everyone laugh and it was a lot of fun and it was cool to kind of see you drive and it was also cool to just see you on that stage, you know, For just, sure. just, I don't know. It's, it's as an Asian American, it's uh, interesting to kind of be in this world, right? So, yep. we we love cars, and we love doing stupid things, and we love mowing the lawn, and that's yes. why we have really nice, expensive lawn mowers like this one. Kind of. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, where are you from? What do you like to do? What do you do? Yeah, uh, I'm originally from China. Been in the U.S. for the last 10, 11 years. Uh, really like to hear because you can do fun stuff with cars here and you can't back home. Uh, yeah, I kind of like an all-around car nut. Initial D and anime kind of got me into cars and ever since then it's like, oh God, we're sinking deeper and deeper into this and didn't want to get out. And uh, yeah, eventually, you know, from uh, S2000, from Formula cars to it's a thousand time attacking to this is like the new chapter so that's what we've been on the last year and uh pretty pretty much a year so where are you actually based out of uh we're actually this is our home track this is or we're based 40 minutes north of here uh in about in chicago land area uh so this is super close for us went home last night to have a nice dinner and sleep and came back this morning so very cool all right so, so is this pretty much the craziest or at least fastest a90 time attack car in the u.s Maybe in the world? Maybe in the Maybe world? Maybe oh. for now. For now. <laughs> for now. For now. We'll uh, we're still pushing this one too. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of drag builds out there and uh, we respect those all, but uh, I just like to turn a little bit, you know? So uh, the car has been cladded with a lot of aero parts, uh, downforce, which we'll get into in a little bit, and uh, try to lighten up as much as we could. And uh, obviously, throw more power at it because you kind of have to with these things. And it's been a very competitive packet so far, so. But it's kind of interesting to me because you probably have more seat time mm. and actually track miles in uh, A90 Supra versus 81 else, right? Uh, maybe outside the dev team who actually developed the car. I feel like I probably have a decent chunk because uh, before this one, you may remember because you made fun of me for it. We had a gray car uh, that we tracked stock. Uh, from initially no tires to with tire with a bit of braking but never upgraded the power and then before we we're supposed to go nuts with it I had a little kiss with a wall just a tiny just a just, just a minor little, little incident yeah a little yeah. bit yeah but, a little bit. and that's kind of the thing is you've pushed this car the platform and you've pushed it beyond obviously its limits uh, and you know, now you're developing this crazy build. I mean, how did it go today for you? Or how did it go this weekend for you uh, at uh, Gridlife? Yeah, this weekend went pretty well. Uh, we were leading all yesterday, and then this morning I uh, wasn't quite wired up right, but uh, lost a few positions, tried to improve the last one. Everyone just else just improved a little bit further than we did. So uh, we ended up 3 tenths down from the leaders, finished third in our class, still over two and a half seconds quicker than the previous years track record in our class so i gotta be proud of myself for that this car is so new you know it's still only a 2020 model and we've only had this is the fourth event on this specific chassis and uh, still learning a lot about it and still trying to get better so yeah i remember i think it was last year at grid life uh i saw your gray one and it's like the car hasn't even been out i haven't even seen one on the street yet and then here's jackie ding with his turbulence gray A90 Supra, just, just lapping, lapping, lap after lap. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really cool to kind of see somebody take it on head first. This chassis, you like embraced it, and you just kind of wanted to, uh, I don't know, you just wanted to take it on. That's that's yeah. really cool to see. I, I kind of fell in love with it a little bit. Uh, I came from S2000. Uh, 
at the end of our kind of tenure with it, I felt like, okay, what are things we need to improve? I feel like chassis could be a little stiffer. I feel like I could use a little more torque to power out of corners. I feel like the aerodynamics could be improved and there's only so much we could do if we're in a limited like rule book, like street modified. So we started fresh with this, learned last year about what it needs, what the car is, where it is lacking at, what can we do? And you know, this is when we got all the ideas together and said, you know what, let's do it. And it kind of got put together in about 90 days and everything went crazy from there, so. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's do a little walk around on yes. it. Let's start from the front and then go to the back. So sure. tell us a little bit about the aero package in the front. Yeah, this is kind of our own doing with uh, one of the fr uh, uh, companies up in Canada, uh, Spade Sport. They built some of the fastest, wildest time attack cars in the US. So if you remember the uh, Vibrant Civic, the same dude did all the body work, all the carbon fiber on that car. And uh, I think it was the fastest time attack uh, car in North America until it met a wall. Uh, so, but still, the parts are very proven. Uh, the carbon's dry carbon, so very, very high quality and very light. And uh, that's kind of what we've been going for, to go with a really, really advanced aero package to supplement the car's really nice aero properties to begin with. Uh, also with the hood, it's a full one piece uh, dry carbon hood. It weighs over 60, over 60% uh, lighter than this factory hood. So it's about 17 pounds all in from here to here and all the way across the car. And that is such a big piece on this car yeah. in terms of body parts. Like basically when you look at the A90 Supra, the whole thing is the hood because it includes the fender too. Yep. That's the craziest thing. It really is. When I first saw this car in person, I was wondering like, how the heck are people gonna do over fenders on that? You know, because the fender is part of the hood. Yeah. It's yeah. just like this crazy design. So like the, all of this stuff, this is all functional then. This is Absolutely. not for looks at all. Yes. So the, ver the, uh, the effect of an end plate on the splitter is basically one to keep more air on the splitter to create more of a pressure differential and it generates more downforce. That's why you see a lot of time car cars in our class, even though we're not allowed to go with a wider splitter, we keep more air on the splitter and it makes it more effective. What we have here is a 3D cone shaped end plate and uh, this actually generates little vortices down the side of the car and it prevents air from spilling underneath the car and that, redu that actually increases lift and you uh, add a little more drag as well. So uh, this is a very clever design by Space Sport. If you look closely on the 2020 F1 cars, it's kind of like a carbon copy. Oh, okay. A little right. bit. A little inspiration. Little bit, yes, a little bit. So like, why is it that you haven't opened up these? I know um, yes. Tada-san from Toyota, uh, he, he mentioned that a lot, like if you were to take these cars to the next level mm -hmm. to do road racing or time attack, you know, you can open up some of these vents for actual usage. I think one thing we looked at with the car was one, it was really well ducted. So even though the opening wasn't that big, it's all very nicely ducted into the heat exchanger. So to get rid of that, to or create an action opening means you have to make new ducts to fit these uh, heat exchangers. And uh, another thing is we don't actually know where this goes to. Cause it <laughs> like this goes right here into the fender liner and there's just not room in here to fit any heat exchanger. So uh, that's one thing we're looking to. Plus actually, if you look at how NASCAR does it, a closed off vent is actually better for aerodynamics than it is an, like a fully open functional vent. Cause that means arrows go into the car and it's creating more lift versus if you block it all off, it actually reduces the drag a little bit. So. Mm, okay, all right. Anything else in the front that we should talk about? Uh, on the front, bit of a wrap, nice design. Uh, mostly was just, uh, trying to generate as much front downforce as we can. Uh, if you move a little bit further back, we kind of move into the cooling system of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, underneath, if you look closely, like an, underneath the main opening, we have the AMS heat exchanger. And that kind of, that is our, really what's keeping this car cool right now. Uh, obviously, as you know, this car is a water to air heat exchanger system. And uh, the water gets really hot after a while. And uh, this thing helps cool the water with more fresh air. Uh, it's a much bigger billet with billet in tank piece and it really keeps the intake temperature in check. On the sides we have the Koyo Rad uh, side auxiliary coolers and those also do the same thing except for the coolings. So, Wait, uh, so what is this? Is this a condenser? Uh, that's, I think, the tr uh, that's either the trans cooler or the condenser. Oh. I have to double check. Wait, so you still have air conditioning in this thing? Interestingly, yes, because the air conditioner is part of the cooling circuit for the intake air. 
So if we get rid of it, there might be some issues. I think we're talking to the AMS guys and they said it would be okay to remove it. We haven't gotten to it, uh, which is something you'll see kind of like a theme where there's a lot of things we want to do. Right, so that's kind of the thing. There's like a lot of things that you can't actually modify because this car is so smart, right? Yeah. Um, you can't actually change it because otherwise it won't be drivable at that point. It will be unhappy. Right. That's so, something we'll get into. Okay, yeah, we'll get into that. Yes. All right, so um, let's move on to the wheels and brake package over here. Sure. Uh, for the wheels, we have Titan 7 uh, TS5 squared setup 18 by 10.7 plus 38 all around. Uh, I love the guys over there. Uh, I think they create really nice wheels, really quality, and wheels that I can dirt drop, I can do skids, I can hit curves, I can, you can do jumps at Button Willow, and I just know they will not fail. And you need that kind of like trust in the car, in the parts on the car, and wheels are super, super important because that's what keeps the tire on the ground. So uh, yeah, I fully, fully back the product, and uh, for tires, we're using the new, the very, very special uh, Nankang uh, CR1s. These are actually the first sets in America. Uh, this is a tire we're trying to build to combat the Yokohama AO52s. They're all over and they're really competitive, but I think we can build a car tire that's a little bit more durable, so. Wait, so what is this? This is just how many laps you have on it? Yeah, so this is interesting. So we mark which side it's on, left front, with one dash for every session, and every vertical dash is how many laps, hot laps we did. So this is one session with three hot laps, one session with four hot laps, three hot laps, another session two, another session two. This way we keep an eye on how much how much a tire has been wearing, how long it's been on the car, how many heat cycles it's gone through. And uh, once it goes through a certain amount of heat session, heat cycles, we'll be like, okay, maybe it's too stiff and we can't do any more sessions with it. Mm. So. And tell me about the brakes. Brakes, it's right now still stock brakes. Uh, we've been running the uh, Counter Space Garage C2 front pads and C11 rear pads. We're working on a really effective brake package with Neo Motorsport, uh, still in development. Uh, lots, lots of development to come. And uh, car's braking system really smart. Uh, these modern new cars, you can't really just throw a really bitey pad into it. Otherwise, it thinks, hey, you're braking, you know, you're, you're locking up the wheels with a really small pressure. You must be on ice. And then stop giving you brake pressure and you stop braking on a racetrack. And you really don't want that. So that's something we're trying to get, get our minds behind. So Hey, gone are the days where you could just swap on uh, rotors, caliper, pads from any manufacturer and it just stops. But right, right. now you actually have to like trick the computer or whatever. Yeah, you gotta you got work with a computer to figure out what it wants. Yeah. It's, it's, we're not gonna say painful, it's just tricky. So, so in that uh, sense, then you can actually get a lot more time potentially out of this car if you have a chance to upgrade the braking system. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think there is a lot more time if we can find a braking system that one provides more power front and rear, but still keep the balance. Two, give us a little more control and more heat capacity. That's going to be the way to go. Plus, OE brakes are kind of heavy, you know, so. All right. And tell me about this. This is all carbon too. This is real dry carbon. Yes. This is all made by the same guys at Spaceport. Uh, this is their prototype uh, carbon vented fender. You might have seen the EVS tuning one. Uh, ours cut in a little deeper, so it's a little more effective. Uh, this is. This piece was really special because Spage made this up in Canada when the car wasn't there. He eyeballed the measurements, made the thing, brought it down from Toronto, Canada to Texas, where we're competing that weekend and slapped it on. And that's why there's a bit of duct tape to try and, you know, close off the gaps that we had. But uh, this is functional also. Fully functional, absolutely. Everything on the car was done with function. But what does this actually do? So what it does is, just as a fender vent, a uh, fender vent extracts pressure off of the top of the wheels. As you're spinning, as the wheel's going really quickly, it generates a lot of pressure up here. And that creates actually a front lift and your front wheel stops sticking on the ground. What this does is it extracts the downforce, uh, extracts the air that's building up the pressure, sucks it out, and you actually get a little more front downforce. Same with the front vents that also help with cooling as well. So this uh, reduces the pressure on behind the rear wheels. So kind of like the Spoon S2000 fenders, you know, a lot of the JDM looks, they always have a little vent in the back. It's exact same thing to try and get more pressure out of the wheel well and, you know, out to the side of the car so the front can be more balanced on the road. Awesome. So detailed. I love all the nerding out. <laughs> yeah. Like, so this is a good example too. Like I've seen kits where they kind of delete this yes. and it smooths it out. Mm -hmm. So why not do that? Or why not actually use this as like a rear brake cooler? I haven't gotten to it. Okay. <laughs> we okay. haven't done that yet. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yes. Maybe part part two of this. Okay. Eventually, down, yeah, down eventually. the years. Yes. All right. So let's, let's look at the rear. Well, this essentially is a street car still. 
It is. Trunks still oh, work man. over. Also, Asian driver, no survivor. I think we have the perfect meme for that. Yes. Represent, yeah. my friends. Yeah. Represent. Insert, insert uh, uh, family guy when the, when the lady goes, I turn left now. I turn now. Good luck, everybody else. <laughs> yeah, right there. Okay, so uh, this wing is massive. It's oh, so crazy. But like, so this is mounted onto just the hatch? Yeah, just the trunk. So this is still fully functional. I could open it up. But but like, so this is the goose, like a gooseneck design. Yes. Why why not just have like a normal, what do they call it when it's a normal design? Bottom mount, I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah so the if advantage of a swan neck wing is that uh, the wing actually, look at it, you think, oh, all the air goes this way and that's what generates the downforce. Ah. So how the wing actually works is that it, uh, it makes using the pressure differential, again, kind of like the splitter, uh, using the pressure differential, it generates downforce, but to generate that the pressure down differential, it has to keep the bottom side of the wing super, super clean. So if there is anything to break up the bottom of the wing, that creates more drag, because behind that, where it mounts to the wing, that will be all broken up and your air will not have a very nice clean flow. Versus if you do a swan neck like this, or even on the Audi R8 GT2 car, where it kind of mounts from the back this way, it's really, really funky design, but they made it work. Uh, this way, you know, you go through the top, this bottom side of the wing is remaining a lot more cleaner and uh, you can generate up to 15% more downforce just by switching from- yeah, Just doing this. Just doing this instead of bottom mount, so. And then, of course, you have a gurney flap to like yes. just add that little more downforce. Yes. This is probably as aggressive as a single element, uh, which is kind of one instead of like a dual element wing, uh, as, as aggressive as you can go. Uh, we're making so much downforce, we're almost cracking the trunk, but not quite. Almost. Wait, so then would it be better if you actually mounted it to the chassis? I think so. That's something we're going to look into in the future as the car gets more power, uh, which we'll get into soon. But as it gets more power, as it gets faster, we're going to need to look into trunk mount. That is, haven't really had the, uh, didn't really want to get a grinder just straight cutting, cutting chassis just quite yet. I know Papa Doc has did it yet, but I can't, I can't do that to it. <laughs> so tell me about the rear splitter here. Yeah, uh, the rear diffuser is from Verse Engineering. Uh, it's not super, super aggressive. They like to make things that are, you know, more streetable. So this is probably the most streetable item, arrow, that you can see on this car. Uh, it's still very effective because they kept it at a very simple five degrees. One thing you'll maybe think about is that when you see a lot of really aggressive splitter that are like 30 degrees and you think, oh my God, that's really aggressive. I usually don't work. If even if you look on F1 cars and everything, the, the angle that they have for the slope is very small because if you have a really, really aggressive slope, the air, the air cannot stay attached and it starts turbulencing behind and you actually generate more drag than it does uh, reducing, reducing drag or create downforce. So It looks cool though. It does look cool. <laughs> so on a show car, yeah. go for it. Show on a track car. car. I mean, th that's the cool thing about your cars. Uh, this is all function, but it still looks good. And I love that, that you've kind of, you know, really thought about the aesthetics of this car. I think so. Like, yeah. I think we try to, you know, keep the spirit of the A90, but just go a little bit wider at the, you know, the, the Tsukuba time attack style to it. Try to give it that little bit while making it as functional as we possibly can. You know, a little bit duct tape and zip tie here and there. So have you weighed this? Cause the stock is 3,400 pounds. Yes. So this car with, without me, full tank of gas, 3,275. With me, driving weight, racing weight, 3,400 dead. Okay. So, so it's basically like that you took out the weight of a driver. Of a, of a me. Yeah, yeah. of a you. So, uh, but yeah. that's it. We did add in a, a roll bar uh, at the back. So that's about 50 pounds. So can we open that? Yes. Is there a way sure. we could look at that? So in your class, you can actually remove all of this interior stuff. Yeah. Everything after the B pillar, which technically this car doesn't have, but after the driver's seats, this can be removed. So that's pretty much what we did. Uh, we threw in a lighter anti-gravity battery. Oh yeah, shout out to anti-gravity. I just got one of those for my 240Z. So that's awesome. I'm stoked on that. Yeah, this battery saved us a lot of weight. It's pretty expensive, but a stock battery is 64 pounds. This is like 15. So we save about 50 pounds just from a freaking battery. This, the saving we got from the battery actually evened out adding the roll bar in. Mm. And safety is something we're not gonna try and, you know, cheap out on, yeah. so. You can't skimp out on that. Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, like there's still, this obviously is still a street car. I mean, yes. you, the sound deadening, all this stuff is still here. It still has a stock fuel tank too. Yes, stock yeah. fuel tank for sure. Uh, that's one thing we're fighting actually at the moment is uh, the stock fuel tank is shaped a bit like a, a bit like a this. So like a U shape, but upside down. Um, and the fuel pickup is on one side like this. 
So under really hard cornering to the right, all the fuel goes to one side and you start losing fuel pressure because it's not literally picking up fuel. Uh, you know, we're looking into Holly Hydro Mat, we're looking into like a surge tank. That'll be next because right now we have to run the car full tank, otherwise it'll lose power out of the corner. Oof, and that's really hurting on the way. Yeah, because you're... Uh, oh, God. Once you hurt the engine too, you hurt the lap. Let's check out the engine bay. In terms of power adders, this is what I'm actually kind of curious about. Because as you know, I have an A90 Supra 2. The only thing I've done is a tune. Mm. And you know, it's a slippery slope after that, after Very. you tune your car, so... Very. So, at first glance, it looks pretty stock. And it kind of is. We well, kind of had to because, well, look at it. There's so many sensors and wires and you pull one of those out and the whole thing stopped working. So it's about being, pl playing with the system and being very methodical about what you do. Uh, I love AMS for their work. Uh, that's why they are taking care of the entire power package on this car. From the AMS intake to the prototype charge pipe at the front, these two are giving us a little more airflow basically to and from the turbo. And looking at the turbo itself, it doesn't look like much, but it is actually a Pure 800, a stock frame turbo upgrade. Uh, what that does is basically, they took a stock turbo and milled out the inside, put in brand new wheels and turbine and everything. So it flows a lot more air to and, uh, in and out of the turbo. Uh, good thing is it makes way more power. Uh, it's maybe not as aggressive as a Garrett or a BorgWarner, which we're hoping to switch to a Garrett unit later down the year, uh, but it looks stock. Yeah. It's very sleeper. Hmm. Okay. And yeah. so did you have a chance to dyno this or did the yes. AMS uh, guys dyno? With, uh, with also the AMS Catalyst downpipe and uh, Ecutec custom tune, we put down on chill mode, 490 wheel, and uh, on kill mode, 560. So it's uh, on, a, on a dyno jet, so you can kind of play the figure around. Right. 560, and that's with what kind of fuel? Uh, well, that's actually with, uh, all, oh, with full, well, only 93. We got to about 520 before the engine started knocking a little bit. So we threw some race fuel at it just for, you know, safety. Uh, MS109 and 93 5050 uh, premix. And that got up to 560, a lot more happier. The cut doesn't knock and heat. So that's where we've been running at reliably so far. So hmm, Okay. And tell us a little bit about the suspension. Yes, suspension, we actually, probably where we put the most amount of work into. Uh, we have a Reinhardt R2 coilover, uh, two-way. So. It's, a, it's an inverted setup on the front on the top so you ju just rebound from the bottom and the compression at the top and uh we have full spl arms for everything the entire catalog they were very very gracious and very uh, helpful on the whole project so we can basically adjust everything on the car a camber toe caster anything you name it we can do it really easily at the track side too wow that's actually kind of interesting that they came out with arms that quick for this car yes uh, also mostly because they do make bmw stuff and this is Let's stop there. We don't talk about that. We don't, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> There's quite a few to hide. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Anyway, let's let's move on to the interior. Yes. <laughs> if I just looked at this area here, then <laughs> oh, which by the way, it still says engine compartment hot. Yes, because we it's just very, very, off. very hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. but just looking at this area here, it's kind of crazy to me how stock it is it is you still have your little cell phone holder thing we here. do we do I mean, we still have a glove box with the ecutech dongle and everything inside. and you still have radio and everything i have ac oh yeah that's right we already looked at that we have yeah. bluetooth we have ac we have everything huh. so it's all functional everything uh, is functional still yes. amazing even the lights up here you know they, they can dim and go mm -hmm. visors which are actually we're supposed to by rules have these visors uh, you know. The visors that don't do anything, you mean? Yes, they're, they're, they're horrible. <laughs> glad, glad I have some, someone on common over that. Yeah. Uh, but okay. like you could still talk on the phone and stuff with... Really? Is that what it does? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, yeah. Oh. You could still call your mom while you're time attacking. Okay, cool. That's, yeah. that's coming out immediately. <laughs> yeah. So. And you still have cup holder. Yes, this is where I threw the keys for the races. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, so tell me about the interior. Uh, we basically keep it as stock as we could, apart from the roll bar for safety. We threw in a pair of Sparco Evo QRT seats. Super, super light, they fit my body really nice. And I love the bolstering on the side. That's kind of when you're core and cooling through corners, you need the shoulder to be, you know, supported. Uh, six point harnesses for safety, again, also really helps the driver being stuck down. I feel like even with the bolsters on the stock seats all the way in, I'm just like floating around a little too much. So having six point seat belts and hold your shoulders down, really helps. 
I really like this piece. It's our suede custom steering wheel. Uh, the guy is based in Cali and does super, super awesome job. Uh, custom specs on everything. I wanted kind of like the uh, launch edition colors, but he made the red brighter. And also there's some custom uh, stitching with white, red, and white. So it kind of matches the exterior of the car. Wait, so this still has an airbag then? Yes. Wait, so part of it is because if you do change the steering wheel, the car will get very mad at you. Yes, because then you lose cruise control and this and maybe even the paddle shifters, which I, can't, which I use religiously on a racetrack. So if I lose all those, uh, I'd rather not lose anything. So yeah, like again, like we said, um, I don't want to touch too much because I feel like as soon as we go too, too far in, the car is kind of like a, going through a, a point of no return and you have to do a Papadakis and just cut the entire factory wiring harness and start over. Mm -hmm. So, and then that's the thing is you've driven Time Attack for quite a while now. Yeah, it's a couple of years. Is it, um, an adjustment or is it an advantage for you to not have to shift or not have to um, actually manually row the gears? You know, that's actually one of the points why of why it ended up leading me to this chassis because no matter what you do with an S2000, you're gonna have to shift gears. And versus this, it's... Right, and the shift time is so oh, yeah. good. Yeah, I would say it's tuned really nicely for the streets as well. So when you're pouting around, it's nice and smooth. It doesn't to do anything too aggressive. But when you hit sport mode and get on it, my God, this is as good as any like racing transmission and formula cars I've used. It shifts so quickly. It shifts really, really quickly and I love it. And you don't have any overheating problems or anything with So that? far, nothing, nothing. And we cranked the boost up, obviously, the 560 wheel horsepower and it's still holding on just fine. So I think some of the drag cars got up to like six, 700 foot pounds before six gears started slipping. So we're, we're at 510 foot pounds and I might just keep around there because again, street tires, we're on 200 tread wear. We don't have all the grip in the world. So we can't really lay fat 11s everywhere. That's not the fastest way, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much for showing me your Supra. This is, um, it is kind of, crazy to see that there aren't more people adopting this chassis totally agree for this kind of duty for time attack wheel to wheel yeah. racing or just track duty because i if you guys watch hoonigan auto focus you guys know my number one thing is hey keep car culture alive and any manufacturer that comes out with a new sports car that's fun to drive in this day and age, 2020, 2021 is all right by me. Yeah, props to them. I mean, they didn't have to make this. They really wanted to make this, but they didn't have to. They could have stuck to making Corolla, Yaris's, rebadged, you know, Mazda 2s, but they didn't. They spent the money they saved from hybrids and made this. And I really appreciate them for that because I feel, you know, I, I, I can I put my hand up on this? I was never a Mark IV super fan. I'm going to get lynched in the comments. <laughs> They're gonna kill me. Kill them, take them out. Take, <laughs> snipers, take them out now, oh. take them out. <laughs> yeah, but th I just fell in love with it. I feel like in, in a day of age with a CEO who actually cares about the cars he makes, come on. You know, I want to support that. I want to support his passion and- Yeah, yeah. because I was just standing trackside just not too long ago and I saw uh, Evo 9 pass by, right? And then an S2000 and then a Corvette, and then I see you in this thing, and I'm like, heck yeah, that is so cool. And that's the problem, is Honda doesn't make the S2000 anymore, you know? Mm. Mitsubishi doesn't make the uh, yep, Evo. Evo anymore, right. and then of course the, the, the Corvette's around, but now that's a completely different platform. Kinda, yeah. But it's, it's kind of crazy to see where it's gone, right? So yeah. while manufacturers like Honda for example, they still make cool cars like the type Civic Type R. They don't make a S2000, they don't make a rear wheel drive car that we can enjoy anymore. So why not build something like this? Yeah, I think honestly, coming from S2000, I looked at this and thought, look, actually feels like an S2000. Even driving sometimes, it kind of reminds me of one because the seating position, the way you almost sit on the rear wheels, the body shape is almost like an S2000 with a spoon top. If you look at it from the side, the silhouette, it just reminded me of that. So. Wheelbase is only three inches longer than an S2000. It kind of fit everything I wanted from the S2000 that if I were to build one out of my S2000, I have to dump 25 grand in. And at the end of the day, I still have an S2000. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? I said, you know, screw it. I want to try something new. I want to learn more. I want to figure more out about it and do something cool. There you so. go. Well, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to follow Jackie's adventures. Jackie, Jackie Ding's adventures. If you want to fo follow Jackie Ding's adventures, definitely check out his YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description. And I think that's a wrap. Oh, <laughs>